it's about that time, man, that you play me some real pimping, man. That's what you got for me today? Let me see. Let me see where you at, man. Cause we got Ro in here, that's, that's aggressive. Very aggressive. Man, give me some real smooth pimping type shit. I might fuck around and get him on the hook or something. You never know. Oh, that's the one. I put zero on that one. What you think, Jack? That's super cold right here. Can you see it being a hit? I can see it. You can see it. <laughs> I can see it. Even Siri said something. Yeah. She said the Bluetooth connected, my nigga. Uh. <clears throat> That's all she said. Ooh. Can you see it being a hit? Oh, shit. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know that ain't my nigga Marvin Gaye on that bitch. Come on, man. <laughs> That's real player right there. Yeah. You hear it. Man. That's what they have to me to stop touching shit. Yeah. Right now. You know how. Get the milk, nigga. Fuck man, the cow. Hey. I like that shit. Hey, man, welcome back to the 85 South Show. Yeah. You did. Listen, man, we on a hot streak of just doing it real big over here, Jack. Welcome back. Hey, it feel good to be here, bro. Man, the streets need you. They, they calling me? They yeah. calling me to come back to the street? You a welcome voice in the community, man. Praise God. Praise but you God. know, I always mm -hmm. wanted you to be a part of some big shit. I always wanted better for you than you wanted for yourself. So you know what? I picked up the phone, I said, call Jack. We about to move mountains right here. We about to do some shit that need to be done for the culture and for all the future ghetto legends. That's what we named our tour, the return of the ghetto legends, unfinished business. Mm. So you know what I had to do? I had to make a phone call and get in touch with some people who called me back and text me some info and I called my partner directly and brought none other than the king of the ghetto, wrote the Vandross. We can do nicknames all day. One of the coldest niggas that ever come out to H-Town. Held it down, one deep, by himself. Gave us hit after hit, the shit to sip that drink to. Did. Told us how to hate a bitch. Also did. How to whip a slab. Did. How to got them, you know, be a nigga that stand on something. The mule. Come on, man. You learning something every day that you fuck with it. Teachable moments. Teachable moments, man. Yeah. None other than mm. zero, nigga. Mm. Welcome to the trap. Man, Welcome to you. the trap. Amen. Appreciate you. Amen. I got a million questions. That's why I couldn't wait to goddamn get this shit underway. Say mo. Cause this nigga so cold with it, bro. Like on some Nate Dog type shit. Not to make comparisons, but when you need a nigga on some down south shit for a cold ass hook, some smooth shit that you know the ladies gonna fuck with, and the niggas and the killers and the thugs, you gotta call Zero, man. Why Everybody know that. Jay Z, Bun B, Pimp C, H Town Legend, man. All the way up here in the trap, fucking with it. My first question, I gotta ask this because if Chico was here, he would definitely ask this. Now, Pimp C held you in a very high regard to the point where he just pretty much separated you from all the other rappers and said, hey man, I don't see none of these niggas outside but zero. Yeah. <laughs> like, man, please give us a Pimp C story just off the top, just to pay homage to a, a real, another ghetto legend. Sweet Jane Jones. Sweet yeah. Jane Jones. Well, man, well, first of all, man, uh, R.I.P. to the pimp. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, when you put money on a nigga books, like, you gotta put it on his books. Like, these people came and come got me up out my cell and was like, somebody brought you money. This nigga made his way inside the prison. And I go in the cafeteria, instead of putting this shit on my books, this nigga gives me $500. I'm like, first of all, nigga, you in the cafeteria, you feel me? And then you giving me, like, I can't use this shit in here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, do with it what you will, and walked off. 
Yeah, so, <laughs> so I know it was quick. <clears throat> But I mean, it was a, a moment between Rotha the Van Dross and Pip Z, and then gave me A hey, and, and walked out the prison. That shit was, it's, it's hard to get a, in, inside of a prison if you ain't got no spin number. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, he brought me my shit personally. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's hard. That nigga, not, he ain't send no money through somebody on no green seven. dot. Yeah. That nigga actually stepped foot in the prison. Yeah. Not like in visitation, nigga. This nigga in the cafeteria. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, with them, with them beans. So, yeah, nigga brought me my shit, man. So how did you transfer the money to your book? <laughs> I never did. I had to keep that shit until uh, 2007. I just kept $500 until 2000, I think it was 2006 at the time, 2007, I mean, I came home with $500. <laughs> like I came home with 500, like, and then, you know, it's the old Franklin's, like the, the little bitty weak ones, you know what I'm saying? Not that little blue shit we got now. It, it, when you, you, it, was, it was little faces yeah, little when you faces. went in. Yeah, it was little faces. And it was big faces when you got out. Nah, it was still little faces. But I mean... I'd still take little faces. I'm yeah, looking for some yeah. that shit. Yeah. Money. <laughs> yeah. money is money. <laughs> D, D. That shit was crazy, though. Now, you know, before we really got officially underway into the action, man, you said you've been in the game 25 years. Yeah. yeah. I want to go all the way back to the beginning, before it was any success. I'm talking about the, the, the formulating stages where you're like, okay, I'm fucking with this rap shit for real. At what point did you really just start fucking with the rap? Once upon a time. Man. Uh, the beginning. I decided to do that shit in 90, in 94. Freak me. Out there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I decided to do it, you know, uh, I thought I was gonna play ball. You know, there's a lot of people thought they was gonna play ball. Yeah. I thought I was gonna play we ball. We did too. What ball, what you play? Basketball. Football, basketball. Yeah. And I thought I was gonna like, you know, I, all the shit I was involved in, all of the, the uh, all of the collegiate leagues and all of the, uh, like the Calvin Murphy understudy, the pre-NBA shit. And I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm gonna do this. And I ain't end up doing that. I end up on some. Nigga, I, what if Zero would have went to the league though? Well, my, 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 <laughs> well, I would have been done right now. Cause that was you talking about '94. Hell yeah, the motherfucker was in his prime. So in 2000, you know, 2022, I wouldn't have been. Cause I'm still doing what I'm doing right now. Right. I wouldn't have been doing that shit. Like that's some Vince Carter type shit. Being in the league with no hair come in with no hair, grow hair, and then leave back out the league with no hair. Like, you been in the league a long motherfucking time. <laughs> like, yo, yo knee game ain't what I remember was. when Vince Carter shocked the whole world, though. Yeah. That night, that motherfucker stuck his arm in the rim. Yeah. yeah. And then that next day, it was pandemonium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We knew then. But, we, like, if you, like, really fuck with basketball, you know, he was cold, cold yeah, was way cold. before that. Yeah. But as time will go on, you know, you get to be cold. Yeah, you have like to develop cold, that goddamn cold, jump cold. shot after a while. Yeah. Goddamn knee get to hurt. Man, I'm telling you, like that shit, like, and this rap shit, my knees don't hurt shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm still, I'm still doing what I'm doing. But it, it definitely would have been basketball, though. But I got, I got, I, I, I'm going to say it was some hate. I got some hate, and I got cut from the team. And I could have kept going, but then I was like, fuck it, I ain't want to go to school no more. Yeah. So I started hanging out with that nigga over there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, y'all go back. So I'm gonna just say, appreciate my nigga Sando for ruining my childhood. Ah, you don't clap for this nigga. He said ruin. No, I'm just fucking with hey, it. was a good ruin though, cause yeah. I mean, man, like, yeah, man, he, he, like him and my other partner was my only support system. Yeah. So I wrapped that shit and they'd be like, yeah, nigga, keep doing that shit. And I kept doing that shit and uh, it ended up being a big ass blessing. Yeah. And it being a big old bliss. So yeah, I'm glad I ain't play ball. He was with you when you first hit the studio? Man, yeah. I'm talking about before we left the house house type shit. Like, yeah. We was still trying to go to school. And then, you know, fuck that. Like, motherfucker became uh, hustlers and then men type shit. I'm gonna ask you, hey man, you heard him rap first, man. What, what made you say, okay, my partner cold for real? How old you was at that time? 
For real? This nigga musically inclined that shit. Back then. Yeah. Shit. <clears throat> what would you say was your first little taste of success when you was like, okay, I, I got my foot in the dough now? Man, it had to be, because I did this shit a whole lot of years for, for nothing. You know what I'm saying? It was professionally first in 98, the first record. And I ain't really make no money until I came home from jail the second time. And, uh, it was a it was hip hop for HIV. That was the name of the show. It was a, it was a 97.9 sponsored event. And I want to say it was at a, the NRG Stadium. And I'd say it was about maybe maybe 30, 34, 35,000 people. You know, I'm used. To, I was used to doing rooms with like maybe you know three, four hundred. And I came out on the stage and. Uh, it fucked me up because Plies was up there. I was late. You know, I was on, you know, I was on nigga time. So I'm like, fuck. This nigga already talking about uh uh he doing shawty. I'm like, I'm oh, not, nah. well, I might well go and go back to the crib because right. this is if number he one up song there doing in the country. Shit, right there. Jack well was in the video. I was in the video. <laughs> I got man. so much pushing off that shit. That's terrible. But they will fuck anything. Yeah. And this day. Till this day. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. But man, 35,000 motherfuckers, man, like he was trying to rap his song, and you just heard the crowd just start saying zero. Like, and he was looking at him like, fuck y'all talking about. So when he left off the stage, ain't nobody go nowhere. I went up there and I was like, man, this shit is crazy. And I went up and I think I did, I hate you. I think I did some more shit, but I mean, I had never felt no feeling like that before. Yeah. And, and Man, they had the whole crowd. I was, saw this video, they was playing your shit at the rodeo. And yeah. all the motherfuckers was knowing that shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a, I mean, this is old, it's an old song from, this shit predates social media. Yeah. So I mean, like, I mean, this round, I mean, I guess, you got so much music, bro. I, I swear I hear a new Zero song yeah. every time I fucking go to Texas. You have to, yeah. hey man, what that is? Oh, this the old shit again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that's a, I mean that's why we able to keep deep. on. Yeah, that's why why we able to keep on eating. Cause this shit, I mean, it's new to you, but I mean that shit probably just it's just old. It's one of them. I got so much shit before I signed to rap a lot. In, in 2003, yeah, because I had a career from 98, a professional career from 98 to up until the rap a lot days. So I was already having about like six, seven albums out, and a lot of that shit didn't start hitting until I made it to the the you know the the plateau with with rap a lot. That they make all the rest of the shit kind of. Oh, let me, let, me, let me go search his name now type shit. This shit dope, oh, we got six albums before this. You know, a lot of shit never got that push that it probably should have got on an independent label. So, I mean, it, it did what it did, but you come into this life of Joseph McVeigh shit and you yeah, got a nigga yeah. putting hundreds of thousands of dollars behind promoting this motherfucker. I always wanted to ask you though, like, a lot of motherfuckers who listen to your music know that you can't rap fast as fuck. Yeah. But you from Texas where the style's so like you don't that. you don't really hear a lot of Texas rappers go off on the rapid fast and the twisting and shit like that. Like where you pick that shit up at? I mean, to be honest, uh in most city where I was from, I mean I mean Houston, Texas period, but on that underground music scene, we had a group named Street Military. And you had a couple of cats in this group, like 
like KB the Kidnapper or Pharaoh, you'll get certain, it's a, it's a sinister beat going on and it might be a little slower. So you'll get them like, you know, check to the break of bones in the, and, and did, 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 did. like you get to hear that, but it ain't nothing like bone though. It's like, this shit here make you wanna like break something. Like this, this like, cause you hear bone, you kinda be like in a good mood. Like, you know, wake up, well, all right, bitch, I'm up. You know what I'm saying? It's cool, like you cool, but like this shit here, like, you make your forehead ball up. Look, I don't want this to be weird or nothing, but what you doing February the 17th? It's like three days after Valentine's Day. Cause I'm gonna be in North Charleston, South Carolina at the North Charleston Performing Arts Center, baby. That's at eight o'clock PM. It's going crazy. Carlos Miller is bringing jokes like you've never seen jokes before February the 17th. <laughs>
I'm hot, like, I'm hiding the bitch. And, and man, look, I go back and listen to the school tape because I don't know what the fuck happened on it. I go back and listen to that shit like. What are, your, what are some of your favorite moments from, from fucking with it though? Man, getting to see some of the, uh, the legends before me do they thing. Yeah. Like going in there and you know, RIP to Big Hawk. You catch Big Hawk on a freestyle. You know what I'm saying? Or being at the gate, buying a screw tape. And you know, screw open up the door to sell you a tape. I'm not even in the click at this point. But then you got Fat Pat, also RIP to him. You hear him in there in his regular voice, freestyling for the screw tape. And you know, it's, it's no pins allowed. Like, this is really awesome. All right. You know, like, the shit y'all be doing, like real freestyle. Yeah. Hit that bitch and, nah, this ain't some shit you memorize and this ain't some other, you know, radio interviews. It's a freestyle. And I mean, to sit there and be a part of it is one thing, but then to watch the artistry of other people do this shit, I mean, like, that's a whole nother, like an old nigga would say, that's a whole nother bag, Jack. A whole nother bag? That's a whole nother bag, man. Big Mo in there doing the, He's singing, you know, he's singing about pulling up an eight or some shit, you know, just some regular shit. And we actually in this motherfucker pulling up an eight, but everybody got their own eight type shit, so. All right, you done made a lot of songs about drink. What are some of your favorite songs by other artists about drink that you fuck with? You done quit now, so shout out to Zero for quitting yeah, drink. Yeah. Hold on, before yeah. the, what's the eight? <laughs> Stop, don't get this, we're not gonna, who are you? This nigga gonna leave if you keep asking these police ass questions. <laughs> God damn, you making this shit a deposition. You don't know no, none of this street terminology. Yeah, yeah. Just I sit I your Mr. Drink. Potato I Head do. looking ass back then. I got it. I just had a plan of gin or some shit, or a beer, or a 40. Man. We're not about to sit here and explain all this shit to you. You out yeah. the loop. Yeah, 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 it's like, you, know, you, you drink your paint of gin, you drink me a pint of gin, I drink me a, you know, when I was drinking, I drank me a pint of syrup. So, you know, I got, I got a pint of syrup. Gotcha. But you probably gone, but I'm pouring it up a little different. I don't really Muddy. just want to go in and, and, and sound like I'm giving a how-to guide to go to prison. Understood. So I was just, yeah. Yeah, see, that. But I mean, you know. Keep it music, Jay. It's just all, it's just, just keep all. keep it music, girl. It's just all, I'm good. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I gotta say Big Mo, cause I mean to be honest purple with you, stuff. man. Purple stuff and uh and and bar y'all, you know uh, pull it up a song that I'm on, you know what I'm saying? Me and Big Mo, Big Hawk. Yeah. Uh, but it's not really too many of them, cause to be honest with you, man, like I only listen to me. Mhm. Mm and I've only been listening to me for a long time. I know that. You let me uh, hear some shit yeah. that I ain't never heard twice. And I don't this ain't got music, man. Like, yeah. he got a lot of shit that's out, but the shit he ain't put out, that shit hard as a motherfucker, too. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate that. That was really dope as hell. You know, being a fan for so long, then to get to hear some shit that I know the world ain't heard. Right. right. Now it sound like I'm lying. Oh, One so. thing about the Houston artists, period, that they got a lot of projects from mixtapes to yeah. albums and whatnot, and you know, this the whole uh, thing behind getting they, the getting their music out. They can go platinum just in Texas, yeah. and they're so supportive out there. And like you said, it's a it's a whole world within itself yeah. when it comes yeah. to that music. Like, how, how many mixtapes you got uh, uh, versus albums? I mean, I definitely got more albums, but uh, it's really hard to to separate them because a lot of people been calling albums mixtapes, I guess, because of the... Because, hell, they really are. Yeah, because, I mean, you don't have nothing that goes into the album these days like how it used to go, but I know we right around it, we right around it, 41 as a whole. And I can tell you that it's probably 17 real albums in the wrist mixtapes. 41. But society probably gonna tell you it's 13 real albums and the rest of that shit is just 
some shit that a nigga did, but j just because it didn't come out on a major. You know what I'm saying? Like, they want to look at everything that came out, you know, back in the, you know, like, Life of Joseph McVeigh, Let the Truth Be Told, Still Living, like, everything that came out on a, on a label label. They'll, you know, like the shit I've been doing, like the sadisms and the, you know, the, you know, uh, the codeines and the, you know, the drinking and drivings, they'll be like, like, that's probably why, why Carlos say, you go back and you hear a new song, but that bitch ain't new. It's mm -hmm. just, you just happen to stumble across that motherfucker. It's so because, deep in the archive. Yeah, and it ain't nobody, it ain't nobody pushing that motherfucker. It's yeah. just, you know, you, you know, I try to push as much as I can on a, on a smaller scale. Cause you yeah. know, I ain't working with no Ted Fields type of budget on my own shit. So I mean, it was different when the nigga was on Rap A Lot. That's what I was just about to ask you. Tell me about your time on Rap A Lot. I mean, shit, it was definitely a, uh, a learning experience on what I needed to do when I got to, to like man my own ship. Yeah. Cause as an artist, you know, you get for lack of a better term, you get pennies on the dollar. But if you got something to do with the other side, so now it's kind of like you pay yourself and then you pay yourself. Other people, like, they get your shit and then they, all right, pay for this, pay for this, all right, this what you left with, you know, this, this smidgen right here is what you left with. I got this lump sum, though, so I wanted that lump sum. So, I mean, watching how <clears throat> Business is done. Yeah, and then picking up on it from different people, like not just at the big label, like smaller labels, like you know the 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 KMJs, the Presidential Records, you know the even even my time at uh at Rec Shop, you know helping out with the City Serve album, like I I watch how D Rick did shit. Yeah, and kind of just put all that shit together, and I'm in a cool position where I don't really have to do too much and also at the same time can still make too much from not doing too much. That shit too much like cool as fuck to me, so I be doing that shit, but uh, I, I can step that shit up a little bit. I, it's just, I don't be having the need to. Yeah. Yeah. How did you, how would you define your version of success? To, to like, if you were explaining it to an up and coming artist, what would you, des what would you describe success to them as? Well, I know probably from your experience. From my experience, I mean, I have to say at first, I understand that other people's versions of success is the type of car and the type of house. And, but to me, it's just having that shit and not having to break your back to have that shit. Kind of like, you know, no disrespect to, to nobody that got to get up and go to work in the morning. I do some shit like that, but about, I don't know, I had to say about since 1996, I ain't had to get up and go do a motherfucking thing if I didn't want to. Big salute. So. That's what we strive for, man. That's exists. Like, nigga like, hey man, Wednesday, 85 South. I ain't had to tell nobody, like, Hey, I'm finna shoot down there right quick. Can y'all mark me absent? Or, or I ain't have to tell nobody shit. Right. So that in this to me is, is, is successful when I can just go to my hotel and, and just stay there for the rest of the week if I want to, and ain't shit gonna get cut off. I think that's, uh, and, and, and no matter what size the house though, it ain't it. It can be the 10,000 square foot joint or it can or be the 2,000 square foot Exactly, joint. it's yours. As as it's your shit. And if you ain't gotta get up tomorrow and, and you know, accelerate your heartbeat cause you running late for some shit. Stress yourself out. You successful. You get yelled at and all that old yeah. puss ass shit. Yeah, for sure. Exact Mundo. The 85 South Show, the number one show amongst black people who pay their bills whenever the fuck they want to. <laughs> Don't let nobody put no pressure on you. We in here with Zero the Crooked, the most city done. We were talking about the most city done freestyle though. Now that one gonna live forever. That's kind of like, 
the anthem of the underground of the city. Like when you really get to some Houston shit, you go hear that. They playing that at brunch every Sunday. Right, right. That's all the ladies want to hear in Houston when they get drunk. They swear they freestyle, they get the freestyling over the beat and everything. You got one with that one. How'd that come about? Man. No, I gotta ask a lot of questions, cause we don't get no lot of zero interviews. I gotta do goddamn 10 years worth of interviews. <laughs> shit, you don't fuck with nobody. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, this shit going platinum. No, nigga, that, ain't nobody heard you talk for this long ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't recall that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Like, that shit was, uh, it was just a regular day. I was fucked up and I was, I was fucked up. Yeah, and, uh, and the beat came on and I, I thought it was, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was thinking of a master plan. I thought it was that. Yeah. But as I listened to it, I was like, nah, this is a remake. February 19th, I will be in Columbus, Georgia at the Bill Hurd. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's going down at the Bill Hurd in Columbus, Georgia, February 19th. That's 2023, brother. Make sure you get those tickets and make sure you come to the show. I'm coming for the belt. So they do got an uh, version of it on there. Yeah, yeah, it's like a little, like a, like a little sample on that motherfucker, but. That lady who's singing on there, they yeah, sample that, she sued the shit over. out of them for that. Yeah, 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 but I mean. Black people I love that shit. Food. I know, black people love that shit, don't have no fucking idea what that lady talking about. I don't know what the fuck she talking about. <laughs> and that'd been my song since 99. Hell yeah, yeah. That shit just sound like him and me. I don't know, is she saying him and me? I don't even know if that's a word, but hey, shit, man. it sound good though. That shit hidden. Yeah, Sometimes and I mean. it's best not to know. Nah, it's best not to know. I, I just rapped that. on that motherfucker. Went off I just, I just, for damn near five minutes. Yeah, I just went off. It was just one of them, I ain't got shit to do. I mean, I did a whole motherfucking, I did a whole freestyle album, though, called Gangsta Fire. Yeah. I was just stealing everybody beat. I stole for real shit, I mean, no shit, I mean. Jacking for beats. Yeah, I was jacking for beats. And uh, that was just the one off of there, I guess, because of the tempo. And everybody knew what it was. Like yeah. when it come on, you think Eric B and Rock him. Yeah. And then that shit come on, I'm just, you know, you know, slow light and banging. You know, whatever I said on that motherfucker, and then it set the tone for a different song. Right. Okay. I, I gotta do this one though, because you know you got an infamous Monica wrote the Van Drop. That's when you get deep in your singing bag. Yeah. So for all the ladies who are already fans, yeah. give us, give us a couple of uh wrote the Van Draws ones that they can go through and You know the ones, they be walking through the house with the little, with the little goddamn clean up shit on, little titties out and shit like that. If they walking through the crib, ain't got no nigga, you know, mopping the kitchen and shit. What would you suggest that they throw on by wrote the Van Draws? If they don't want to hear no zero, they want to hear some rope. Uh, holding the pussy hostage. Come on, man. Yeah. That's why I asked this, because I knew you weren't going to let me down. J-O-N, make this list right here, holding the pussy hostage off top. Yeah. I'm playing that on the way home. Yeah, yeah. I but can relate got, to you that. You got to know what you're playing for, though. Okay. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's not a happy song. I believe it. Yeah, but I mean. The title then, got me interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holding the pussy hostage, uh, naked headed lover. Yeah. That's this dead nigga dead. that wrote a whole shit about my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Naked head love. Naked uh, head love. Uh, 
Then I stole Puffy and them shit. So uh, I guess I, I think that shit kind of fucking you tonight. <clears throat> yeah, the, the, yeah, with R. Kelly and um, yeah, 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 yeah. But it was, it was Bar Kelly though. It was like yeah, it Bar Kelly was on there. Come on, man. Yeah. Uh, Pretty Brown Round. Yeah, Pretty Brown Round. That's another one. Uh, man, all the way back to year 2000, I guess. Let's chill. There you go. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's, it's it's quite a couple. It's quite it's quite a couple, man. You know, they get rambunctious. I know it. Yeah, they get rambunctious. It's a great it's a great uh, change of pace, though. Yeah, 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 it is. You never know what you're gonna get. You know, a lot of people be saying that they they started that singing shit first, and there is you you always hear some rappers say, "I'm the one," you know what I'm saying? Got everybody singing and rapping at the same time. Right. But you've been doing that shit for a long time and whatnot. What influenced you to do it? Uh, well, to be honest, because I had to. I mean, I mean I'm going to just give you the realest answer there as possible. I couldn't afford to pay nobody else they really could sing. So Simple as that. I had to try to learn how to do that shit. Before I, before I met Big Mo, I was doing this song called Too Many Niggas, you know, trying to take me off of my game. So I was, I wanted Mo to sing that shit, and I met him. You know, Screw was like, hey, welcome to the Screwed Up Click. But of course, everybody wasn't there. Right. So when I run into Mo, I'm like, hey, man, my name is, you know, Zero, man. I want you to, if you can, because I ain't know how that shit went yet. I was like, man, I hear you on this song. He was like, shit, I need to hear $500. And at the time, shit, nigga ain't had no $500. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to go home, I'm get in the mirror. And I was just, I just hum that shit till it sound good to me. And that's how that shit started. You know, uh, I ain't had no money to pay nobody else to sing, no ad-libs or sing, no hook for me. So I just learned how to do that shit myself. At this point in the game, 25 years, man, and you know, you got a long list of features. Who you, who you want to work with? Who left on your list? Man, there used to be a lot of people on my list, man, but I'm kind of, I'm just kind of content with doing my own thing right now. I mean, like, who wouldn't want no song with Snoop? You know what I'm saying? Cause I mean, a whole, I had to, I have to give, I have to give like four or five years to my, my post-teen upbringing to Snoop. You know what I'm saying? That whole Man, we dog just had Snoop. movement. We just had Snoop come through here. Well, yeah. last week? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she like, I got him been in the room with Snoop. Like we didn't smoke weed or, or you know, had a text conversation here and there, but like this nigga, man, like you gotta understand in a screwed up click, every day this nigga screws in this bitch. Doom, 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 doom. <sighs> doom, 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 doom. Like he in that bitch beating up all of this death row shit. I'm talking about mixing the shit out of it. Most of the hottest freestyles on that motherfucker, man, is on Worldwide Southside, you know, uh, you know, bow down and shit like that. That that whole West, West Coast connection. Yeah, man. Like all these different schools. Like we rapping on a lot of these motherfuckers on <clears throat> crumbs to bricks and, you know, blue twin. Like we rapping on this shit. Yeah. So this man is kinda like responsible for one of my mindsets. Yeah. I don't know which one it is, but I know he's responsible for one of them, one of them motherfuckers. Like, so it would definitely be a nigga like Snoop. But then on the other side of the game, like I do a lot of shit that ain't rap. Yeah. So, like on some on some musical shit. Period. Like, I think it would be dope for me to do some shit with Tyrese. I Fuck do yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. I do too. That nigga that got some like like he like you know has out to him. But on that singing shit, he kinda like he cold with them harmonies like Brandy is. Yeah. And from a young age when this nigga was doing that Pepsi shit. So like if I could get on, you know, and do like some no, real cold. music. <clears throat> well whatever it was. Cold whatever. Cold. It was. Whatever that nigga made was. them, he made them motherfuckers go crazy. Man, he did. I believe he was he riding did. that bus for real. <laughs> Tyrese, he he's super underrated on that singing shit. He underrated as an actor, yeah. too. Yeah. People be like, yeah. man, that nigga can't act. I be like, you ain't never what? seen. He is acting, 
Like, his acting translate to him being a nigga on screen. That's why it worked for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, because I know he's a polished actor. Yeah, yeah. But he's like, he's giving y'all the best version of an actor nigga. Super, yeah. super believable. Exactly. The first movie he ever did, Baby Boy, was super believable. Right. He wasn't no flaw in that. Oh, yeah. zero. I got to ask you this. You're from Houston, right? So Beyonce, of course, one of the biggest stars in the world is from Houston. Now I know sometimes at her show, you know, she do breaks and shit, and she got this H-Town mix. Mm -hmm. And she just be playing shit that don't nobody even know that she fuck with. Yeah. Like, I'm, I know she didn't play your shit. I seen a clip. Yeah. I don't remember which one, but I know it's one of them ones, one of them big ass Houston hits that you a part of. Yeah. yeah. Man, did the people be like, they sing you this shit when that type of shit happened? Yeah, man. Like, I be sitting on the sidelines looking at that shit. Yeah. And I be like, it's just a little appreciating, being appreciated type of feeling that you get from a person, you know, on a, on a platform like that. Yeah to be even, you know, reaching back and letting motherfuckers know that that's what, what she fuck with. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like, you know, like like Alicia Keys and Swiss jamming most City Done this week. Yeah. Or last week. Like, that shit is like, it's big for me. Cause I mean, I don't walk around like, hey, how you doing, I'm Zero. So. I don't know if you fuck with the TikTok heavy though, but it was this white couple who went viral. When they got married, they was rapping that shit. Yeah. Like to each other, like it just came out of nowhere and that shit did millions of you. saw that? Yeah, yeah. Shit yeah. crazy, man. <clears throat> you you like want to take that like that out? Bro, I, be, I got a page, I don't like post shit, You're not active, but, but I like to watch that shit. Gotcha. It's the, some of the most interesting bullshit I have ever spent time, <laughs> wasting time watching. Yeah. I never knew it was that many thick, fine ass white women in America. I didn't know. They ain't on no other sites. They gotta be government agents. <laughs> they, I'm talking about, Aliens. bruh. I don't even know how to explain this shit. I've been seeing all kind of thick women, thick Asian women, thick Indian women, thick bitches from Sri Lanka. It's one bitch, she live outside in the village in Africa, fine as a motherfucker. Be outside barefooted with a fat ass. I'd be like, Lord have mercy. <laughs> On TikTok. And you know what? Every time she posts, it don't never look cold where she is. It be beautiful as fuck in the background, but she live in like, yeah, in the village part. You know what I'm talking about? On they know TikTok. I'm not bullshitting. I'm talking about you see a bitch, she don't have no left hand. Beautiful. Everything else flawless. And you be like, who the fuck need two hands anyway? We only use one of them most of the time. I'm saying it's shit in there that'll make you question the shit that you think that you like. There's so many places that I ain't never thought I wanted to go just to see if they got a lot of fine ass women because I've been seeing some crazy shit on TikTok. I don't know if this shit is real. I heard the Chinese run TikTok and this shit might just be AI. I don't know if I like this shit or not, but they got enough information to tell me what the fuck that I like and they're doing a damn good fucking job because I don't even have to follow these people and they just send me shit that they know I like based off the shit that I already like. <laughs> so they know the fuck what I don't like. They don't send the shit I don't like. So everything I scroll past, I damn near like it. Like the shit so much, I ain't even got to post shit. They know that I ain't gonna post shit and I still got 30,000 followers. I don't know what the fuck they waiting on, but yeah, that's it. Shouldn't ask me. I feel passionate about it. So and how'd they, you get the name Zero? <clears throat> he chose it. Yeah. Because he don't like nobody. That too. That Zero. Too. That's before one. Yeah. That, that, that Zero don't too. even fuck with one. It's yeah. zero. I don't even fuck with me. So I mean, One yeah. deep. One deep entertainment. Yeah. He the CEO, the talent. I ain't gonna lie, that shit, that shit really come from not having shit. That zero is like, like I started from, you know. Yeah. Everybody start from that. But I mean, that's for, personally for me, like, yeah, man, it's a reminder of where I'm not trying to return back to nothing. So, mm. just zero. Now the zeros go behind the ones yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah. Six, seven zeros, man. And that was, that's always been your only rap name. I mean, I went through some shit. Uh -oh. oh man, we died in Melbourne. Yeah, I went through some shit. Uh, I had some dumb shit. Uh, <laughs> motherfucker used to call me acapella. I guess because I ain't had no motherfucking beat. Uh, <laughs> couldn't buy no beat. Uh, Jamaican Joe. 
Jamaican I Joe. Used to do all them little chants and shit. But you ain't Jamaican. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, but I mean, you know, I was just trying to do a whole bunch of shit. Your name ain't Joe either, is it? Nah, yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. Like, most of the time, you know what I'm saying? With, Who the yeah. fuck call you Joe? Hopefully nobody. Yeah, hopefully wow. nobody. <laughs> he call you Joe? Well, probably that nigga there. Yeah, that nigga there. <laughs> yeah, he's... He, nah, I really. Nah, I really. Hey, man, what's some songs that you fuck with that wouldn't nobody believe that you like? Uh, Hotel California. Now that shit hard. The Eagles? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Eagles. Yeah, hotel. Yeah. Like I, I wake up to that shit on the Alexa joint. Uh, uh, Wild Goose Chase, Steel Pulse. Mm. Some shit I listen to that nobody would think I like is Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't have paid you for that one. I fuck with them Red Hot. I'm talking about all they shit. They just, it's just easy to listen to. Yeah. Jaded Aerosmith. <clears throat> I got to go back to uh, CeeLo and Nas Barkley with the crazy. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Feng Shui is my favorite song off of that. Yeah. It's just some... Mine is Smile. That's all. See, other than that, I'm listening to me. So mine don't get too extensive. Yeah. Yo, 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 what's going on? It's your boy DC on Fly. In case you haven't heard, we at the 85 South Show have launched our own independent streaming service called Channel 85. And for our loyal supporters, we are currently offering 20% off for six months. Just use code 85 per center. Right, spread it out. Code 85 P E R C E N T E R. Once you sign up, you'll get access to the podcast a whole day earlier than everyone else on YouTube. All of our new live shows, independent specials, new shows like Five on the 85, and even get your special offers and discounts for 85 South merchandise. And the shows, it's only $8.50 a month or $85 for the whole year. And you can find us online at china85.com or on your iPhone, Apple TV, Amazon, Fire Stick, Roku, and even on Android. And remember, use code 85 per center for 20% off for a whole six months. That's China. 85, subscribe. Oh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, February the 27th, the 2023, listen, at the Goodyear Theater in Akron, Ohio, guess who's going to be there? Me. Hell yeah, 7 o'clock. It's going to be at 7 o'clock. Grab them tickets and meet me in Akron, Ohio at 7 o'clock. Do you hear me? 7 o'clock. Sometimes you just get one of them motherfuckers stuck in your head. You can't. Like if it's a, like if it's some old, I just say typewriter super cat. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it. Super cat shit is dialing my baby. Yeah, that was a bad motherfucker too. You know what I'm stuck on right now? That Ron Aslan two chains, the plug. Man, I listen to that shit 15 times a day. Mm, that it, shit hard. I'm talking about it just go with every occasion, nigga. Like you even get like. Get some food delivered, and then you walk back in the house with the food, and then you hit that bitch. You looking at that plug? That shit, it just, <laughs> that shit hard, man. Ooh, you know I got it. That's my shit. I fucked with that hard, bro. I'm trying to get Ron Eisner on the show. Nah, that'd be retarded. Man, get Mr. Big up in here. His grandson hit me, say he gonna send me the, the agent number, or whatever. But yeah, yeah, bro. That'd be hard. I, should, I will set it off big for Mr. Big, bro. Oh, Get him a big bottle or whatever. You know, Uncle probably drank some, some kind of yak, some Louis XIII yeah. or something. Yeah. Get yeah. him some nice young girls to sit around. Yeah. Some nice pretty faces and just let him talk his shit. That man been in the game 60, 70 years. Bro. Yeah, man. He knows some shit. That's a classic motherfucker right there, man. But that's what I was just about to ask you. 25 years in the game, man. Gotta ask, what would you tell the, the next generation coming up behind Zero? Somebody, it's the next motherfucker know all your music. What you got for the next generation? Advice Man, from Uncle Zero. You, that's what I'm saying, you looking back now. Man, 
If it ain't finna change your life, don't sign that shit. But how can you tell though? Like you can always tell. You can always tell. Like, like you gotta have wisdom at your side, first of all. You gotta have somebody that's gonna know. Because if you a young dude, what's looking like a payday for you right now don't mean it's a payday for you in the long run. They long term. Yeah, like a lot of people look at this like, I'm broke, I'm fucked up right now, and they finna give me $250,000 up front. You don't know what recoupable mean, you know what I'm saying? And you, you ain't don't read know, shit. You ain't really read shit. Uh, you ain't knowing that you could possibly stand to get, to get an old TLC type of deal and you basically making a penny per. So you can sell two million, how much money do you really got? And you get a you penny $2, per. $2,000. Yeah, <laughs> like you can go, I, yeah. you can go feed downtown <laughs> on two streets for a day and then you're done. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, you gotta, if you can, man, create your own movement, stay independent as long as you can. Let me ask you this, do you feel like up and coming artists do. How important is is it to have your own studio set up? Well, I mean, basically, if you a real creative, I mean, it might be three, four in the morning, and you just, I don't want to say something different, so you can just go to it and just go to work. Other than you know, oh, I, I gotta book it when I can get back in. Then you gotta wait to do your shit like it's. So you need your own shit just for the creative vibe. But then a lot of people, you do your shit at studios and motherfucker might walk in, hear somebody fucking with your shit and that's how you get sh your shit gets stole too. Yeah. yeah. 25 years later, how often do you record? Not as often as I used to right now. Uh, Cause I didn't like, I don't know, I didn't, adjusted my time to do other things now. You a day or night recorder? Really, I would prefer to do it in the morning. I be, but you know, we be end up going to the gym in the morning, so it really be on some late night shit now. Cause when I'm at like, I don't wanna record, I gotta wait till late night when the plane stop flying, cause you know, we got some good shit. And it's gonna pick up a conversation outside. Damn sure a plane flying overhead type shit. So, nighttime, Really from some, anywhere from midnight to about six, seven in the morning type of vibe. That's the, that's the best time for me. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best Jake, time for me. Oh, no, I'm fine. Thank you so much. <laughs> so polite you polite as fuck. Fuck Jack. No, nigga, I don't want no goddamn water, folks. There you <laughs> go, my boy. Yeah. Fuck that water, boy. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, well, so what's your creative process, man, when you're inside the studio? What you need? in order to, like, really get inside your mode. See, the studio, that's all I need. You know, uh, of course, all the extra shit will make you feel better, but I don't want nobody in there, though. Like, I need a lot of leave me alone in that motherfucker. Like, I'd rather, I'd rather be in there by myself. Mm. Like, I want to engineer my own session. I want to hit my own buttons, like, I want Are you engineer, too? Yeah. Mm. Where you picked that up at? See, watching Mike Dean, watching Mike Dean when he was mixing, get thrown and you know songs like that. Like I, I watched this nigga mix Pimp C album from jail. I, mean, yeah. I watched him mix like. But you know, when you engineer, that's a different thing. What you look for? What you listen for when you engineer? Well, to be honest, I'm just recording myself. Yeah. And I'm putting myself as close to what I wanted to sound like before I actually hand it over to a professional to to mimic that. And I guess you know, put the season on what I did, you know what I'm saying? But when I'm listening to the finished product, I just want to make sure that my voice is the most important instrument. I want to make sure that I'm not muffled. I want to make sure that I'm heard. I want to make sure I ain't breathing too hard. Like, I'm going to critique the shit out of myself. Yeah. So I want to hear, I'm, I'm looking for perfection or as close to it as I can get. So that's my that's my process. I'm going to keep hitting that bitch until I'm comfortable with it. I don't give a fuck if it's two words, 300 times, I'm finna hit them all. I need, I need that shit to be right. Making the music or performing the music, which one is where you get more of a rush from? Performing. Yeah, performing that shit. Cause I got some, 
I got some songs, man. They're pretty deep. And it might be one of them days. And you hit one of them songs, and it's, it's, it's one of them days where it's like, I'm finna perform the shit out of this one. <clears throat> like, I hate you, come on. Like, oh, nah. Boy, I'm finna, I'm finna hate this bitch so bad on this motherfucking song right now. I'm finna sing these shit out this motherfucker. What's some, what's a city that, that um, showed you love like you was in Texas? One of them ones that you ain't never, like you went there for a show one night. You know, shit sold out and these motherfuckers know every word of everything and they just fuck with you. It feel like you at the crib performing. Pensacola. Pensacola is like that. All of Louisiana is like that. Uh, it surprised me, but uh, uh, Little Rock was like that. Fayetteville was like that. Uh, damn, it. I mean, to be honest, everywhere motherfucker go be like that. Yeah. To be honest, but I mean, like, it, it really st it stood out in Omaha, Nebraska. It stood out for, at the border, you know, in, uh, you know, like the tip of Texas and shit like that, Mac You know they playing your shit in Mexico. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking yeah. with it. Yeah, that shit, that shit surprised the shit out of me. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, it, it, it really seemed like everywhere, but uh, I, the strongest, where, where I've actually seen motherfuckers get hurt doing that shit, Appaloosas. Louisiana? Yeah, Appaloosas. Uh, Shout out to Appaloosas, yeah. man. Yeah. If you know, you know. Yeah. Get hurt. What you mean, get hurt? Like, you know, them certain songs come on, man, and, and uh, your mood change. Niggas be ready to fight, man. Yeah, and then they, then you got everybody on one. I'm damn near pr promoting, I guess, being drunk, because I'm, uh, I got a bottle, definitely. Like, we got a bottle. Talking big shit. Yeah, we talking, and you know, I don't really, I don't really talk too much big shit, but I mean, but the songs for what they are. It requires that. It requires that shit. And uh, it be a lot of people <laughs> getting their ass with. <laughs> not not in a long time though, cause that like, was gonna happen anyway. We though. do we do a different set of songs. Yeah, them motherfuckers so. came to the club to do that. They do that shit every week. Right, right. I used to I used to rap that. I'm a soldier. Like, you know, uh, don't want to hurt nobody. It always end up with somebody getting hurt. Damn. Don't want to hurt nobody. You told them you ain't here for that. Yeah, but it ain't me. Like it's them. Mm. The crowd. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Another level, man. Yeah, that shit is crazy. Yeah, I love those songs, but yeah, when they start doing that type of shit, I always have to step off the dance floor. You be back in the day. You be out there dancing, Jack? Man, I used to dance my ass off. Really? I was a ticking machine, you know, all that shit. Yeah. Yeah, you think you I know I was one somebody. of them niggas, man. Show You ain't gonna... Nah, not no more. You still do it? Man, I ain't, man, I'm 40 now. I can't be fucking around with that shit. What the fuck that mean, Jay? Man, you got something, though. That, like, if, if he got my song, you know, if he, if he got my song, you know what? You got D'Angelo, how does it feel? You know? No, don't complain. Wow. You ain't got the Hell no. You ain't got wow. D'Angelo. Wow. Nah, he ain't got that, Jack. Wow. Okay, he ain't got that. Okay. He ain't got that, Jack. Wow. <laughs> You ain't got pony? No, nah, he definitely ain't got none of them, Jack. Oh, no, no. That ain't ticking. That ain't ticking. Right. That's bullshit. That we thought you meant pop locking. You, no. you want some other shit, Jack. No. You should. Uh, That's that little, that little genuine that. I ain't gonna do it though, but yeah. Nah. Gonna break Boy, the genuine back had broke the internet. Speaking of which, I gotta ask you about this shit because you said this shit. I think it's on Vlad. You said <laughs> Pimp C made everybody go to bed. Yeah, he did. What? He <laughs> said everybody was at Pimp C houses and they were like, all right, man, go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically, yeah. <laughs> that shit then went crazy on the internet, man. Y'all did it? I mean, what else we was gonna do, though? Like, <laughs> man, we was at this nigga highs. Like, like, oh, man. man. Like, we were supposed to record, but you know, Cor Corey Moe, brother, Mike Moe. This shout out to Corey Moe, man. Yeah, shout out to Corey Moe, man. Country Rap Tunes. Uh, this nigga left the hard drive. So we really at Pimp C House for, I, we were on the road to Port Arthur to record. And when we get there, we ain't got the hard drive with the shit on it that we were supposed to record on. 
So now we just there. So I'm thinking in my head, like, we, you know, this ain't too far from Houston. We can just go and go back to the highs and, you know, come back another day. And it was like, nah, we can't leave. I'm like, I'm a grown up. Like, <laughs> you know, like how somebody gonna tell me I can't go nowhere? And then the crazy part, like, I rolled with Mike Mo. So he believed he can't go nowhere. So now I can't go nowhere. And then, like, we was in the mansion. So I don't know where the fuck the door was at. And I know I seen some type of barge. I know it wasn't burglar bars, but it was some type of barge where- Secure at a club on the door. Yeah, I, I couldn't go nowhere. So, but we in the studio and it, like, it was made up. I'm like, man, this shit look like Mike Dean shit to me. And then all of a sudden he came through and his clothes was different. Like he had on like, all right, I'm gonna have to try tomorrow clothes. Mm. And I like pajamas. Yeah, it was some. It was With the hat on too. It was something to the pajama <laughs> effect. Uh, it was sleep clothes. It, 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 was, it, it definitely wow. wasn't woke clothes. <laughs> and he say, he say, yeah, man, y'all boys need a cover. And I was like, uh -huh. I like, yeah, boys gonna need separate covers in here. Like we need, I'ma need a cover. And then first of all, what I need a cover for? Like, and, and before I knew it, like, it was the next day. And I mean, it was just dark. Like, he like, all right, I'm gonna holler tomorrow. I'm on one couch, he on another couch, and we just sitting there talking about this shit, laughing like, nigga, we really just got put to bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> Did he come down, hey, who are, yo, who are down there laughing? <laughs> hey, y'all better shake the fuck out, up, man. But I mean, the cold pub, we come wouldn't even talk about it. <laughs> we wouldn't even talk about it. And I'm like, I'm like, this had to be like, cause I mean, I came home, like this is before we you know all the unfortunate shit happened. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I'm, I'm like, nigga, I'm, I got to be, I'm close to, like I'm close to 30, nigga. I'm 30 something probably, <laughs> I'm like, and nigga just made me retire for the night. <laughs> and Man, I gotta get, I gotta get famous enough to do that. Just he to make even all my either. company go to bed. He didn't even laugh either. He was just like, yeah, y'all, I'm gonna holler at boys in the morning. I'm like, all right, boy, boys gonna holler back in the morning then. Like, <laughs> and just went to sleep. Then he cut the lights off Man, and he cut unplugged the shit. Off. Like, he cut the, he, he did. <laughs> and, 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 and that was it till like 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. And came in there, like, nigga got up, folded up the blanket, like, we were still in there. <laughs> and, and then Mike Moe dropped me back off, and I was, he dropped me back off to my house and my cars and shit. I'm like, man, I really got here hostage on some, like, nah, nigga, this really Uncle Chad. This <laughs> really Uncle Chad. Like, yeah, man, y'all ain't got the hard drive. Like, nah, we left it. All right, we're cool, shit, we're well, boy. You know, we just go get some rest then, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all good night, I'm going up here with. So, yeah, that's what that February 25th, get where we're gonna be at. Philadelphia at the Carlos Miller Theater. Selma Clock, same thing. Every time, Selma Clock. Hey, y'all going to the Carlos show? It's at Selma Clock. Selma. Here we go. February 3rd through the 5th, 2023, Summit City Comedy Club in Fort Wayne, Indiana. This shit far the fucking way, but I'm still doing them. February 24th through the 26th, I'll be at the Improv in Dania, Florida. Where the fuck is that? I don't know, but I'll be there. March 4th, Variety Playhouse in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh shit, I got some Atlanta shows, nigga. We in here, the squad coming out for that one. Two shows at the Variety Playhouse. That sound like a strip club. They got me working at the strip club? <laughs> Fuck it, I'ma do it. All right, there we go. All right, last, April 8th, 2023, I will be at the Mirage in Las Vegas. I'm back at the Mirage, man. Sold that bitch out the last time y'all came out. We gonna do it again, the Mirage. I had a suit on and all that, and my shit still was like this. The next morning, though, did y'all feel scared to wake up and, until he came and woke up first? Nigga was woke. <laughs> y'all was woke just was being woke. quiet until he... <laughs> Came downstairs. I ain't even know, you know, I ain't finna walk around this man's house. 
You know what I'm saying? Get back, in, if the, I got, yeah, get back in the couch, nigga. Yeah, like if I haven't got already like like lights out in the penitentiary, like it's time to it's, it, y- y'all rack up. You feel me? Like I'm not finna get up until I just oh it's movement in the highs. Gotcha. Oh he moved. He up. That's that's one of them ones mm-hmm. that'll make you say I ain't never riding with nobody ever again. That's nah, it right that, there. That's yeah. the one that say you ain't never been no you know going nobody highs no mm-hmm. more. For no more. What time are you usually lock the doors at night? Like, oh, Man. it's an eight o'clock curfew? Getting yeah. that fuck out of here. I yeah. can't wait to get me a mansion and make motherfuckers go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all laughing. I'm damn sure gonna do that. Hopefully around Thanksgiving, just have about 50 guests, though. <laughs> All right. What, what did you feel like the penalty was if you didn't feel like going to bed, though? <laughs> I don't really think it was a penalty. <laughs> But I mean, I think the penalty was just being up by yourself. Mm. Everybody else sleep. You know, not, Mike Moe wouldn't sleep. Like, we, he, <laughs> up, he just on another couch. <laughs> like, the night was basically like this here. So, shit, what you gonna have going on tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, well, see, you gotta take me back to my car first. Cause... Ray, what's up with that boom boom room? Tell me yeah, about that no boom shit. boom room. Oh, the boom boom room. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Exactly what that shit was like, cause we was up. Next thing you know, they got damn couch got comfortable as a yeah. motherfucker. For real. Felt like home. That was up. If your life was a movie, what would it be called? This some bullshit here. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the name of it. Who would you get to play you? Oh, man. I don't know who the fuck I'm gonna bestow that burden on. Uh, I don't know. It ain't even got to look like you either. Good, uh, yeah, that's good on that part. See, I would get Chris Brown to play me. That's how, that's how far your fantasy can go with this. Fuck, <laughs> Jack, you crazy? I don't even man. know where you. That boy, boy crazy. I don't, I don't even know what to say. Hey man, give me a big hog story. Man, we gotta keep hog. the legend's name alive, man. Give me a big hog story, a fat pass story, man. So I don't. I got one fat pass story because I ain't really no pat like that. I just know this nigga fat pat and Lil Kiki put me off stage one motherfucker time so they could hurry up and do that show and come back to Houston. <laughs> so that's a quick story. <laughs> you know I'm up there doing my song and I'm like yeah and then zzz, hey little old, hey hey look out cuz we got shit to do jamming and all this here but and that was it. That was my fat pat moment. Uh, Hawk. It get a little deeper with, with Big Hawk. Um, me and Slim Thug is in the middle of our beef. And at the time, I'm on some, this nigga tired in a bit, so I gotta get this nigga before he get me. So I'm trying to ride around the motherfucking neighborhood on some, I'm finna find out where this nigga house. And I'm, I'm really on some, I'm gonna find out where this nigga house is, tell this nigga come outside and we finna, you know, like, fuck that shit, because we on our way to being something too big in this city. Let's, you know, let's chop it up right quick. This nigga Hawk find out that I'm riding around the Tombaugh area. I don't know who told on me. But, you know, Hawk had this real country type of draw when he talked. And I seen the nigga calling my phone, so I seen his number. And I didn't answer the phone. Then my text went out. And I read it in his voice, and he was like, Bitch, I know you see me calling you. <laughs> and I read it just like that. I was like, damn. So then it rang again. I hello. I say, hog, what up? He say, nigga, you on the north? I'm like, yeah, I'm on the north. He like, you looking for Slim Creek? Man, if you don't get your bitch ass back on the... And like, you, man, ain't talking to me crazy, the motherfucker. And I mean, I'm trying to tell him, like, I'm looking for the nigga house so I can talk to him. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm not looking for no bullshit. But now Hawk, Hawk was one of them, uh, if y'all gonna fight, y'all fit to come over here and fight. And then I'm finna beat both y'all motherfucking ass for fighting each other in the first place type shit. Scold you real bad on some, like nigga, you like, like that, like your favorite parent when they displeased with you and so shit. So look. Yeah, man, man, that shit, that shit. That shit felt real bad, cause Hawk was like a, Hawk was like Paul Wall. You know what I'm saying? He like the, the people's champ before the people's champ type shit. Yeah. 
and you, you had this nigga Hulk <coughs> man at you, it was like, you feel in life. Like that's the feeling you got like, damn nigga, I just, Hulk mad at me, I just filled every question on my SATs. Like, I ain't get my name right. That's what that shit felt like. Houston done put together a real impressive run in the rap game, though. Amazing. That's pretty cool. It's big enough to do so, so I mean, shit. Whole I, lot of culture coming up out of there, too. What'd I, you say, Jay? I want to know how, how, you, how do you feel about the music scene in Houston right now and whatnot. Are you, uh, are you a proud father? Or are you like... <laughs> The Man, this shit is different right now. This is different. Yeah, shit is different. Uh, proud father, yet? A lot right, of that. But he's, a, he's your forefather, wouldn't you say? Of course. A lot of that you shit, father. man. I, I think it's a lot of bullshit in every city. Mm. It's a lot of bullshit. But I mean, I, I don't really think, I don't really think none of us qualify to say what's bullshit or not, because everything has a fan. Yeah, it's a pocket you know for everything, yeah. But, for the most part, man, uh, what we got going on in the H, the shit that stands out, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure like here, the shit that stand out in the H, or the shit that stand out on the West, or the shit that stand out up top, like, when I think of what's standing out, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. You know, uh, a lot of the younger dudes that stand out down there, like I think our top standing out dudes right now is like 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 the sauce factory, you know what I'm saying? They stand out, you know, sauce walking them, you know, big sense and now what they doing, they standing out on what they doing and they come with their own fan base. You know what I'm saying? And then you got the other cats that are still young, but they're a little bit more, you know, contemporary uh propane, you know what I'm saying, you know, shit like that. Uh the scene is cool from the younger cats to the older cats. Like, the shit that stands out. So, uh, I'm not mad at it. I don't hear too much boot. I, I do hear shit that I don't, I probably per se wouldn't fuck with <clears throat> because it's just me. Yeah. But I mean, it's still some dope shit that I'm hearing. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I say I'm a proud father of that shit. Mm. Yeah. Niggas yeah. still riding swingers down there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that ain't never gonna die. Yeah, yeah, like they just, like us older cats, our shit just don't be all out there like that, like the younger cats. Like, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I, you know, I still gotta sit on the uh, 84 with Ritz, but I mean, I got regular swings. You know what I'm saying? You know, youngsters, they got that shit. Like, I don't see how you could turn right with them motherfuckers. I don't understand that shit either. Carlos, yeah. you got some swingers on something? Uh, I mean, that's not, that's not my lane. I'm from Mississippi now, I will put some shit. I will put some big wagon wheels on some shit, but I only do it now just because like it'll be a novelty. Like it wouldn't just be some shit. Like it wouldn't be like my only shit like that. I wouldn't do that. Mm. I do my shit right now, because I'm able to. Did I you? fuck with the cars heavy down there. They got some, some of the coldest paint jobs come out of Houston, bro. Like real shit. I know a lot of motherfuckers who send their shit down there. You gotta make sure you find the right people, though, man. It's a lot of people out here fucking, fucking mm -hmm. off, man. Ooh, I yeah. done took some L's, but I never <laughs> reveal that to the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, the only thing you can do is, you know, fix it and keep it moving. It's one of them lessons that you learn. Sometimes it don't even be that they fuck you off. It's like you just don't like the way motherfuckers handle you. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, you find people that you could do, that you know, that you can uh, do good business with, yeah. you keep them. <clears throat> hey, I, I, I uh, was talking to my homeboy about the, this era that we uh, that, that happened about, probably about, I want to say about 15 years ago. We remember when everybody had them cars with the cereal on it and the M&Ms and all that, that shit? That was mostly in the mid, mid-South, like Georgia, Mississippi. Alabama, Did y'all fuck with that? Type shit. Nah, I never was a fan of that. that that's... That's, I don't like cartoonish shit. Like, I like nice shit. Yeah. That's too much. Yeah, yeah, I ain't never, I ain't never get into that. Yeah. You know, as it's, 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 it's bad as a nigga like Golden Grams, I couldn't just. <laughs> I'm not grinding no yeah. car like this. I ain't finna grind my shit. Especially at like no that. age like this. That's some, that's some shit you do when you 
20 years old and you the dope man, you just mm-hmm. got a whole I lot of grams. money to fuck off. Yeah. Golden grams. Or you a rapper or something. It's good for promo. Yeah. But if you're doing some shit you ain't got no business, don't you ever put no fucking shit like that on the side <laughs> of your thumb. Yeah, man. I don't even... March 31st through April 2nd, where I'ma be, little hands? You hear that nigga sound like Forrest Gump just read that shit. The Funny Bone at Liberty Township. That's where I'ma be at, the Funny Bone at Liberty Township. That's right, nigga, I got Forrest Gump working for me, nigga. You niggas ain't shit, fuck it. Liberty Township, 2023, Funny Bone, it's going down. Get your tickets. God damn it, bless you. Motherfucker sneezing, ain't nobody got COVID though. The fuck if you doing anything illegal, don't you ever do no shit like that. Yeah. Big ass chain. Oh, Sounds good. Hey, welcome back to the 85 South Show. <laughs> yeah. We in here with Zero talking big shit. Cat wanted, cat wanted to tour Houston, man. Okay, you say turkey leg hood. What no, we gotta go? What's the spots that hit in the H, man? That's what he's saying. Man, uh, we got a lot of shit to hit out there, man. A whole lot of it. It just depends on what scene you got. I'm retired on that shit now. I don't go nowhere. Yeah. I don't go nowhere but to the gym and to go get some money. But I mean, definitely, uh, yeah, you know, like you say, the turkey leg hood. Uh, you definitely want to catch some type of show at, uh, at the NRG if you want that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to the strip club niggas, they still got dreams and onyx. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh... They still got high rollers? Hell nah. Oh, they, oh okay. Hell nah. I just I, got out. I think high rollers might be like a, a store or some shit now. Damn. Yeah. I've been going that long? Yeah, you've been going that long. You been out the loop, Jack? Yeah. Damn. <clears throat> yeah. What about the station or the office? I've been gone. Okay. Been Don't gone. worry about it, Jack. Sorry. Yeah, you've been gone. Like, if it's an office building, I mean, hey, do your thing. But, uh... I got to get me a house out in Houston, man. I love that motherfucker. Yeah, Houston is Zero, cool. you one of the motherfuckers who made me want that Bentley, though. Yeah, the, yeah, that Bentley, yeah. I done had a couple of them by now. No. Man. It's cool. It's cool. I just, you know. But I don't, you I don't got any old schools left? I mean, just that, uh, just that Baritz. Yeah, I just got, I just got one of everything. And just yeah. call it a day. Yeah. I call it a day, man. But I don't go nowhere in that shit. Whatever I did. I know you pull it out. You pull that motherfucker out though. Periodically. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know I, I, I fuck with them cars, heavy. I know you. I, I know you do. Yeah. Like I rode. I rode that motherfucker. You know, we still got Carrington's down there. Yeah. We still got Carol down there. And out of the old man juke joints. Yeah, man. Like, yeah. All up and down, uh, dialing and all that shit. Emancipation. In the tray, yeah, just don't go over there tripping. Yeah. Don't go over there tripping. Don't go over there tripping, cat. Yeah, don't go over there tripping. Yeah, man, can't be loving to hit the spots everywhere we go. Yeah, Papa Do's, you know you gotta hit Papa Do's. Yeah, it's different when you go to Houston. That bitch like a club at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah alligator bites, boy. Come on now. Talk yeah. your shit, Jack. In that gumbo, that jumbo gumbo, nigga. Here you go. God know what he's doing. What's the yeah. best barbecue in Houston to you? Uh, I mean, somebody put me on some shit called Triple J's. You know what I'm saying? That shit hard. Uh, you got to go through Burns. You know what I'm saying? Go <clears throat> fuck with uh, Corey and them. But uh, if, I, if I'm going to say that, because I don't, I don't eat barbecue like that. Yeah. But I mean, definitely, it'll be Burns or Triple J's on that shit. Uh, you got some people out in the country part of Texas? I love to try to show love to the small towns, man. Tone Ball, you know, uh, Brookshire, Magnolia. 
the real country parts. Yeah, um, we try to show love to the small town, bro. I'm yeah. from the small town. So I'm gonna make sure the small town gets a shout out here so well. Uh, There's some so. beautiful women out of Texas, man. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Big bust. Dude. Stop, Jack. I, you say you was getting your life together. Now you backsliding right in front of him. Stay strong, man. I'm trying to, bro. Just keep calling me. <laughs> calling me. Hey, this the this the wildest nigga I know, man. I ain't gonna lie, I'm kind of I'm kind of seeing that though. That nigga on another level with it, bro. He really a superstar, man. But he don't believe in himself enough. You don't think? Hey man, I just gotta click my heels, man. That's why I stay on him, bro. I be trying to make sure he knows how great he is, bro. He always want to talk about the don'ts, and I be telling him, focus on the do's, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. We, me and me and Zero was talking about humility before you got here. Yeah. yeah. And what, uh, what about it, Jack? You know, it's just about you know, just like um, we stop and smell the roses and stuff, but at the same time, don't believe the hype. To keep it going in there. You, know you know got to be your own hype. Dig one hundred percent. If you believe. These people can't hype you if you if your hype don't come out of you first. The first person you gotta convince is yourself. You can look at a motherfucker and tell if they believe in themselves. Mm-hmm. They have a different, they carry themselves different. It's a difference between believing in yourself and being a goddamn asshole though. No, it ain't. Yes, it is. That's it's, all into How many people know some assholes out here? Jack, for it's, no in, reason. it's interpretation. Think about it. There you go. Some motherfuckers there you go. have to be an asshole because they required to do shit that, that that's what it requires. Mm. You don't know the ugly side of the shit that they do. Mm. Like, you don't understand what a motherfucker have to deal with to even be the person that say yes or no. They put in a position where it's like, if you don't like what I'm doing, you always gonna have a name to call me. Mm. But I'm playing my position. If I say yes to every goddamn thing, now my now it's like what what you need me for if we gonna let everybody through this motherfucker? Somebody mm. gotta say no. Mm. That's the asshole. Yeah, yeah. The motherfucker who don't nobody like is the person who gotta say no. Why you think they hired them? Hey, we can't let everybody in here. Mm. So when we don't want them up, when we re- you tell them no, cause you don't give a fuck. You the most not giving a fuck person we got, so we gonna give you the job mm. that we know you can handle. That's why this shit go the way it go. Mm. Mm. Indeed. Indeed. I can feel it's it. hard, but it's fair. Yeah, I was talking about something else. Today, but I feel you, but I'm letting yeah. you know that even the assholes have a job. Gotcha. Man. They have a purpose, too. You Think about the assholes that you know, but they good on your side. 100%. You You're right. 100%. I understand what you Everybody saying. got their assholes. Mm. They got a purpose. Mm. Tell them motherfuckers to get their ass out of here. Mm. You got that cousin that, hey, y'all want me to tell these motherfuckers to leave? Right. <laughs> Indeed. Them your ass, when this work for you, them is perfect. You know what the, the, the assholes, AKA the muscle. Yeah. Oh, I ain't got to tell these motherfuckers this house nasty. You going to tell them in five, four, three, two. It's nasty as a motherfucker in here. We ain't eating over here. Thank you. Let's go. Uh, That's, you need people like that. How the fuck you going to have a favorite if you don't have some shit to not like? That's the way it works. That's why they said comparison is the number one killer of joy. You can't even like some shit no more without saying, man, this shit sound like, oh, they sing like, (laughs) this shit tastes like, you don't even know you like some shit until you had some other shit to go with it. Hmm. I ain't mean to get deep, but I get deep sometimes. Gotta do what you do. I got my own ideas. Hmm. I like it. I like it. Cause you're an asshole too. You only appear not to be because you're around me and I'm a big one. <laughs> Everybody don't like you? No, no, I'm, no, I, I'm definitely an asshole. I know. I, I'm definitely, I can definitely be an asshole. Why you think but, but it's I only, can connect to you? Huh? Why you think this shit works so well? Everybody don't even fuck with you. 100%. Look how many people fuck with you now that they know that I do. 
My DMs are different. Don't nobody fuck with me off the strength of you. That's not true. Yes, it is. That's not. You know how many bitches you didn't got since you been fucking with me? Zero. <laughs> I was gonna get them anyway. Wait, wait, hey man, don't you disrespect my nigga, bro? He know what zero means. Oh. I'm one deep when I get home. You ain't have nothing to do with my success. Yeah, good. And he know exactly what that feel like when your partner start claiming shit they ain't have okay. nothing to do with. All right. <laughs> All right. Hey, if you... If he if got songs about there. niggas like you, Jack. What's the song called? Too many years I done paid the price. <laughs> I hate you, bitch. <laughs> There's that. Good. In front of my friend. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> I fuck with this man. He know that. I remember when that nigga was a baby. He don't. We've been best friends for a long time. Well, there's nothing to say. Stop telling people that, because Zero ain't going to believe it anyway. Long fucking time, bro. Seem like it though. Seem like it. No, that's my dog, bro. I know. He look out every chance he get. That's what's up. We used to just drive out of town, no go to have nowhere to go. That's how fucking crazy I was. I let a blind nigga drive me out of town. <laughs> that's how I right, bro, you can't tell I me I ain't chased my dreams. Man. I ain't gonna lie. I let you. this nigga drive. You was, but he made sure he couldn't drive yeah, I back. I definitely was chasing something. If that he nigga drove like, me to a show and drunk 240s while I'm performing. He made sure he was too fucked up to drive home. He I had you drive. Did it. That nigga had the car yeah. dumb and dumber. One side of the car looked brand new. Other side of the car fucked up. We both getting out. It was the same dope. Yeah. <laughs> he get out first and then you got to climb across. Yeah. I see that, though. Terrible mm -hmm. nigga to know. I used to make him get out the car first and then open the door for me. You fucking weirdo. Why would you tell somebody some shit like that? I, I don't feel like we in the wrong place to be real. I wrote, I wrote in that nigga car one time, bro. Don't let the nigga convince you that shit. I never, I never ride twice with a blind nigga. I ain't that crazy. He don't remember. Nigga. He don't want to remember. That's a little psychological trauma. I, I I actually have no comment. Like, he he knows me better than he knows you. He know I told you him earlier. You drove up here though. Mm -hmm. You drove up here though. Oh no no I I got dropped off. I got yeah, off. See, <laughs> Dana took this nigga license, bro. He's so full of shit. Hey, uh, anybody going back down uh, 85? No, everybody live up 85. Yeah. <laughs> you got dropped off for real. I got dropped off. Oh, I yeah. always get dropped off. We're going to tell Javier to drop you off. The Javier, my nigga. He ain't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to hack him up. Yeah, we're going to have to ask somebody else to do it, bro. We'll, we'll, get, you a, we'll get you an Uber. Don't you get a discount? Oh, yeah, 100%. Okay. Oh, yeah. They get handicapped people discount. Bro, what's coming up next, man? And you got man. this merch. Is this merch for sale? I mean, you know, not not this one per se. Oh man, you just... not this one per se, Delphi. but I, I I do got merch for sale. Uh, Where is it available? Shit, it's, it's it's available right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Wherever you at with it? Yeah, I mean, I mean the the clothes are made here. Oh, word? Yeah, they made it. The Z hey, uh, Row Merch dot com. Send that some over. Man, I got you. Say it one more time. You. Z Dash Row Merch dot com. ZeroMerch.com, the way I spell it with the dash. Man, I got all kind of shit on that joint, man. And it's, uh, on that one, I got a lot of colorful shit on there. I got jackets, yeah. pullovers, you know what I'm saying, shorts. I got red flags, blue flags. Like, I got, there's a bunch of shit on there. I got, uh, you know, shout out to my Astros, even though I don't, you know, but, uh, yeah, I got Shout out to the cheating ass Astros! Hey, shout out to the cheating ass Astros. Amazing. That yeah. was in, you know, oh, they had amazing. Oh, goddamn. They were stealing calls as. Hey. Well, we gotta. Hey, man, whatever. Gotta, hey, a win is a win is a motherfucking win. Yeah, hey, yeah. I don't give a fuck how you do it. Just do it again. And That's what do, I told the bitch. And we do got jerseys online looking like the Strolls, but it's, it's the Mac Bay 19. Yeah. I got some dope shit on there. Yeah, yeah, I got some dope shit on there, man. Shout out to uh, Troy G, you know, the, the creator of that shit. But we got a real nice. We got a real nice uh, online presence right now with the merch. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Everything going crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit going crazy.
Jack, what else you got? Oh man, um, you know, it's New Jack Thriller City. Channel 85. How's it going? It's going amazing, bro. Give me the update, man. Hey, Catch it's, me up. It's going, it's going amazing, man. We got a lot of cool ass guests coming through. Like I said, Keith Sweat still on the way. It wor- mm-hmm. Word. Yeah, he, he's on the way. Uh, Jazzy Faye on the way. Me now yes. Mm-hmm. yes. That nigga hard. That nigga Keith Sweat. Yeah, yeah. He had a hell of a run, bro. Yeah. The, the, shit, the, the, uh, you know, he keeps wearing like 62, too. So 40 years he been in the game. Kill him. Boy, mm-hmm. your auntie will fold in the room and keep sweat. 100%. Fold it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah, New Jack Thriller City is going down. Channel 85, man. Make sure y'all tune into that mm-hmm. ASAP. Channel ASAP. 85 go hard, bro. Mm-hmm. That's how I am, mm-hmm. bro. Where we got all our exclusive content and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta, sure. we gotta link up and get a project in, man. Yeah. Get yeah. some exclusive shit. I'll definitely be checking that shit out. Yeah, man. Y'all great. We go hard in the motherfucking shit. trap, bro. I've got this podcast shit on lock. What you wanna leave them with before we wrap this shit up? Man, I wanna tell y'all, man. First of all, I thank y'all for having me. No problem. You know what I'm saying? Because legend. We appreciate legend. you. Legend. legend. Super legend. I, I want to tell everybody to be on the lookout because I got an artist on my label. By Talk the name about of, it. By the name of Lolita Monroe. Shout out to Lolita Monroe. Yeah. Lolita. She hard. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Big J too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Man, just keep keep rocking with us, man. Uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate being here, and uh, hopefully we'll still be here to get the motherfucking checks. There it is, right there, there man. Yeah. 85 South Show, right. zero, oh, yeah. one deep. We out of here. Let's get that flip, man. Yeah. Hey, get in here, man, for the pig, man. Yeah, yeah. Nice love, my nigga.